everyone. Today we are going to be talking about synthesis reactions. So synthesis reactions are a common type of chemical reaction, and they are all about taking small molecules and building bigger things out of them. So typically in a synthesis reaction, you'll have two, sometimes more tiny molecule molecules, and out of them we'll assemble something bigger. So the generic form of this reaction is A, where A is some sort of molecule that's on the smaller side, plus B, which is another different molecule, yields AB, so something bigger made out of these things. Now in this particular example, our two small molecules are going to be water, which I have a beaker full of here, and carbon dioxide. Now I'm going to generate carbon dioxide uh, using my lungs, so like all human beings and all mammals and all animals, I breathe in oxygen gas and there's actually a combustion reaction that happens inside my body which produces carbon dioxide. Uh, so I'm actually breathing out lots of carbon dioxide and I'm going to be able to put that carbon dioxide into this beaker of water by blowing bubbles into it. So my two starting reactants, the things that are reacting, are water, H2O, and carbon dioxide, CO2. So to give you another way of visualizing those, uh, these are some models. This is a water molecule. The red represents oxygen, and these two white things represent hydrogen. So this is H2O. And I have a carbon dioxide molecule here. So this is carbon dioxide. It is made out of one carbon and two oxygens. You can see there are double bonds holding the oxygens onto the carbon. And from these two molecules, we are going to assemble something bigger. So if I were to show you sort of theoretically using these pieces, how I could build a stable molecule out of them, what I would do is I would break some bonds to begin with. So instead of having double bonds to this oxygen, it's going to become a single bond, which means this oxygen needs something to fill the other spot where it can react, and that's going to be one of these hydrogens. So a hydrogen is going to attach from the water. And now the last bond that this carbon can make is going to connect to this oxygen. And here I have something called carbonic acid. So this is called carbonic acid because this part right here is actually a polyatomic anion called carbonate. CO3. Uh, carbonate is another one of those polyatomic anions. It has a charge of minus two. You can see there's two spots where this carbonate can have more bonds come in. And this is the hydrogen cations. And when you take hydrogen cations and you attach them to an anion, you have an acid. So H2CO3, which is what we're going to be creating here in this chemical reaction, H2CO3, that is an acid. Uh, and so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking this water and I'm going to be synthesizing an acid inside this beaker. Now, we can detect the presence of that acid using this stuff. This is called bromothamol blue. It is an indicator. And what indicators do is they change colors in the presence of an acid or a base. Now this particular indicator is blue in either a neutral solution like water or a basic solution. So right now this is neutral water, so this should be a nice pretty blue color if I add it in. So let's add some of that in and you can see, yep, that immediately turned blue. Let's give that a stir. I think I'm gonna give this just a little bit more so you can see this really clearly. So it's a big old beaker. So here we've got this beautiful blue color. That blue color means that this is a neutral solution. It is neither an acid nor a base. Uh, what I'm going to do though is I'm going to add carbon dioxide into this beaker and I want you to watch what happens as I do this. Uh, remember, bromothamol blue, the indicator that I'm using here, it is blue if the solution is neutral or basic but in the presence of an acid, it will turn yellow. And remember, we are adding this acid into this beaker. We're gonna synthesize it by combining water and carbon dioxide. Here we go.
this is now acidic. So take a look at this. You can really see the change in color. That yellow color means that I have changed the pH of this beaker enough that this is noticeably an acid. Um, now that's a really cool, fun demo. You know, it's nice to see your teacher blowing bubbles into things. But the reason why I chose this particular demo to show you synthesis reactions is because uh, this chemical reaction is actually happening all over our planet. You see, 70% of the Earth's surface is covered in oceans. And at the surface of those oceans, you have wind and waves, and that water and air is mixing. And as that water and air is mixing, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere is mixing with water, and small amounts of carbonic acid are generated. Now, car carbonic acid will eventually break down over time. It will decompose back into carbon dioxide and water. Now, in an ideal situation, what you would have is that reaction would be balanced. There would be the same amount of acid being synthesized as there is acid being decomposed. And if that were the case, then the, new, the oceans would stay about the same pH. Unfortunately, what we've done is we have added a huge amount of carbon dioxide into our atmosphere. Every time we do a combustion reaction, when you burn oil, when you burn coal, when you burn natural gas, all of those things that we rely on to generate heat, and from that heat, electricity, uh, all of that generates carbon dioxide. And we are adding vast, vast quantities of carbon dioxide into our atmosphere. And that means that this reaction is happening faster than it can break down. So while it's fun to see a beaker of uh, you know, blue liquid turn to yellow, that's some classic chemistry stuff, it's important to remember that this isn't just happening in a science classroom. This is happening across every inch of our ocean surfaces. And the more carbon dioxide we pump into our atmosphere, the more bubbles are being blown into this water, the more of our oceans are turning into acid. And that is a problem because the creatures that live in the ocean can only survive in a really narrow pH range. There's a certain uh, level of acidity that they can tolerate before they die. So we run the risk of killing off things like corals, uh, of killing off lots of fish and algae and all the things that we rely on, uh, including some of the creatures that are very good at turning carbon dioxide into other things. Um, so we can create a really nasty situation for ourselves if we allow this to continue.